So for today, we're going to be talking about uh, the TWAB. I didn't make a video yesterday just because I was a little too busy, but we're going to be talking about TWAB right now. We're gonna, I'm going to make a separate video about PvP because I think that's important. Um, and then uh, we'll see what, what else we can talk about. But essentially, I wanted to make this video first because uh, there's a lot of stuff for Gambit coming. So all right, all right, all right. Time for Gambit. Drifter's hungry. No, no, not for Hive, but for the spotlight. Well, maybe some Hive too. But let's focus on gameplay. As we continue to improve and iterate on the rituals of Destiny 2, Gambit is taking the center stage. This isn't a teardown and rebuilding of an entire existing mode, but a moment of our team to realign uh, on goals and what we're serving up for the good players, for the goods are to our players, whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna go to like the straight, straight up uh, Alan from the principal design. Uh, Team director, I don't know. When we added Gambit back in Forsaken in the fall of 2018, three and a half years ago. Wow. We were closing a gap in Destiny pursuits. We had a lot of places in the game to shoot aliens in the face or juice boxes. And we had places where you could face off against other guardians, but we had no place where you could face off guard other guardians by shooting aliens in the face. Fundamentally, Gambit is a PvE horde fire fight mode. It is culminating in a race to kill the boss first. Meanwhile, you can throw small or large roadblocks in front of the other team racing you and or be the roadblock by invading opponents powered up and loaded for for bear. Later that year, we added Gambit Prime, uh, a souped up Gambit with armor based player roles, and then it really cha uh, didn't change much for a couple of years. With Beyond Light, we streamlined both versions into what Gambit is today, combining some of the best parts from the original Gambit and Gambit Prime without attempting to transform the mode or address much of the feedback Gambit had generated over the years. Over the last few months, we've been taking a pass on Gambit to address some uh, said feedback and realign the mode with many of its original goals. Ultimately, we believe it is important that in Gambit, you sh you can showcase both your skill at the at a f at fighting in Destiny and a variety of focus on your arsenal. It should be just as inherently fun re and rewarding to shoot aliens in the face in Gambit as it is anywhere else. A good invader should be able to turn the tide of a match, but a but a good invader should be no more important than any other equally skilled team member. A good invader does not have to mean a PvP god loaded with the best tracking slash one hit kill weaponry. Um, yeah, that's really that's, that really culminates what a PvP god would be in uh, Gambit. As aside from like the actual gods that can snipe you, snipe you from like a fucking grain of rice. But yeah, that's I think that's one of the biggest issues in the game that just invading is just horrible for the people that are getting invaded because you get someone who can at least fucking target someone and you're dead specifically with ex certain exotics it's even worse um players defending against invaders should have ample tools to fight invaders without worrying about using up ammunition dealing with tougher enemies and players should have methods of uh recovering from a devastating invade i would like that yeah that that's in a perfect world it should be rare that a match is out of your hand, hands as a player, or that an outcome is preordained early in the match. That's pretty funny, considering if I see like three titans and like maybe one warlock, I'm pretty, I pretty much just give up because at that point I know they're probably gonna uh, do middle tree arc with the exotic, and then warlock's probably just gonna put down their well so that way they can do even more damage. So at that point, I feel like it is preordained, and I do understand these sentiments exactly. Should be rare that it matches out of your hands. I already read that. Working together with your team to overcome tough enemies and prime the primeval high value target or an invader should feel as gratifying as a hard nightfall. I don't know about that one. Um, you know, no. The primeval I get. High value targets. Uh, an invader. Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, we don't always hit those marks. You, yes, you guys almost never hit those marks. Gambit has a healthy and stable population. I don't believe that. I really don't believe that. I would love to see. Oh, I didn't know my camera was on. Um, I would love to see the the numbers for this. I would love to see how many players are actually uh, doing this because they want to compared to the people who are doing this because of bounties and whatnot. I feel like there's a distinct difference between people who are doing it for bounties and people who uh, do it because they like the game mode itself. Uh, upcoming changes 
uh, fall into five categories. Core activity, ammo economy, primeval tuning, invasions, and rewards. Core activity changes. These changes are all about enhancing teamwork or making the mode easier to play and understand. Okay. Freelance node added. This is pretty good because uh, now I can just do bounties and I know I'm not going to get four stacked. So that's going to be fun. I think it's important that players feel like they always have a chance of at winning. And we see over and over again that full stacks of friends or clanmates have a significant advantage over groups of solo match made opponents. This is true. The modes we have added freelance nodes to Iron Banner, Glory, and Trials of Osiris all feel like they, they end up with a more balanced matches more often, even as they increase and split the number of the matchmaking pool. Yeah, this is true. We're investigating ways to remove the need for freelance nodes that split the population and hope to have something for you later this year. I don't I don't think this needs to change. Uh, I think freelance mode is perfect. Uh, just because there really is no way to fix the solo issue which shouldn't even be an issue it's just people either play by themselves or they just don't have a clan like in my case i have a clan i just don't play with them that much anymore but to be fair it's because i don't play destiny 2 that much anymore um in the meantime the ability to queue for gambit freelance should be very useful very useful rotating seasonal selection of curated encounters starting in season 16. in classic gambit slash prime you got a randomly selected encounter from a list of three for each enemy race on each map. In Beyond Light, due to, to production issues, we were only able to bring one of the three variations forward into the new activity. Those issues have been fixed. We are now bringing the missing variations forward. Playing with the single variation for race slash map for a year led us to an interesting observation. It's fun to know that Hive on Pacific, I mean, oh God, those shriekers. And to learn that the spawns and master and master them over time maybe not an interesting for an entire year but we think it will be interesting to have a set of rotation spawns for a season and over those three months really master each encounter so no more shriekers on pacifica for now but they will be back later in the year um i would like oh well i'll talk to that i'll talk about that when we get to that portion respawn points added to all fronts sections of maps where enemies could cycle in it in or out it could be it can be very it can be frustrating to always have to run all the way from backfield from spawning before you are able to help teammates fight the invader collect drop drop modes etc it can also be very frustrating as an invader to always spawn at the same location on the same map uh, multiple times in a row or to have an invader camp the entrance to avoid confrontation more respawn points spread throughout fronts should help you get back to the action faster and provide more uh, for less predict predictable spawn points during the invasion that's pretty good because i've definitely invaded and gotten sniped in my head immediately so this is going to be very useful because i'm tired of that shit happening because it's very annoying players always drop half the moats they were carrying when they are defeated these can be picked up by anyone including invaders invaders can also drop more moats now this makes Recovering from a ruthless invader or bad luck fighting enemies a little easier. This is going to be very, 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 very beneficial. Um, players can be revived by other players two seconds earlier and auto respawn is delayed two seconds. We want to emphasize the reward of teamwork as, it, as much as possible. Bring your teammate back and saving them a run now is even easier. This change should also reduce the frustrating moments of teammates being forced to spawn as you're halfway through the revive interact. Uh, when your teammate dies and you run to grab their moats, stop for a second and revive them, will you? Yeah, like, can like, can you just revive me instead of taking my fucking moats, please? Because, I, like, take my moats, I don't care. Just revive me so I don't have to make that run. That would be much appreciated. Um, also, like, wouldn't it just be easier to stop the counter or stop the time for the respawn? I know some people would abuse the shit out of this, but I don't think a lot would. Uh, specifically, if you fuck around with me too much, we will lose. All shields have increased, increasing resistance to not non-match, uh, non-matching damage types. Huh. While not as severe as match game resistance in Nightfalls, we wanted a way to promote build crafting and teamwork. This is terrible. Um, if you know, I would be okay with this if this wasn't the only game mode that everything hit like a fucking truck. Like, I'm not even kidding, guys. This this game mode, shit hits harder than raids. I don't understand why. Um, I will never understand why. But now you're just giving these uber beefed up enemies just more shield. 
it's it's gonna be annoying because again uh there's specific like i understand the necessity or i guess want at this point for build crafting and teamwork but you're you guys are adding a freelance that goes out the fucking window like i'm not gonna type in chat who oh, i have void i have this and i have that what do you guys have none of us are going to do that we're going to use the weapons that we feel is going to be the best cheese or the best weapons at the time so i think this change is not needed and will definitely fuck around a few players rules of gambit note added to the launch screen and numerous gambit specific hints have been added to the load screen gambit can be a bit opaque to new newcomers this should give them a leg up i, I guess i don't know um while we didn't do any drastic drastic adjustments here, we have a few tweaks we think will in, will increase interesting decisions, both when sending and battling blockers, and hopefully remove the feeling of hopelessness as you pour ammo into three nights as all of your modes drain away. See, I love I love that he explained that that specific scene because I've been in that scene like all the time in Gambit, and I cannot begin to tell you the sheer amount of just like not helplessness more like what's the opposite of hope that that is like the epitome of like i don't even want to play the game anymore if i'm not running a specific build to kill the knights or anyone else we're fucked and i, I specifically mean like a uh, fusion rifle with the new uh with the new seasonal mod that's pretty good uh one two punch combination that's good combination as well Funny, funnily enough that's a really good combination uh, one shotgun and one punch should usually kill a knight uh there's so many builds just for the knights themselves and having three knights and no none of that build and you're just using your primary because special and heavy don't fucking spawn in this game mode is the literal worst 10 moat phalanx blocker has its health boosted a bit while they are good at positional challenge with their shield and knockback, we felt like they weren't quite tough enough for their moat cost compared to the knight. So we increased their health. That's fine, because uh, they are pretty weak. 15 moat knight blocker gains a stasis attack. We originally planned to pull its health down some as we felt it was a little too beef for 15 moats, which is, yes, they are beefy as fuck. But with the ammo changes below, we didn't find the current health. And no, and no, and no, I can't say that word in play testing we did think they could be more tactically interesting with a stasis attack with without necessarily making them more deadly or harder to kill that's kind of dumb or i shouldn't say that i should give the benefit of the doubt but i'm tired of giving the benefit of the doubt um that's kind of dumb considering stasis will make them deadlier the, and like will make him not only deadlier but will kill people outright because if it's like the ones i'm thinking about that enemies have it's gonna be the aoe that drops makes you slow as fuck and will freeze you if a certain amount of stacks come in you don't think getting hit by that and then like again a fucking knight shooting you with their boom gun in your face is gonna kill you outright i don't know you, it just it kind of sounds like you guys don't play gambit but I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, say anything. Uh, moat drain for multiple blockers continue, continues even if the opposing team is in primeval phase. Uh, what? This will help the team that is behind get to the primeval a little quicker. It's never felt great to send over four blockers only to have an enemy team ignore them all while still being severely behind. Yeah, this is this also gives the team in the bit and the lead a bit more incentive to kill blockers during their primeval phase. Um, this this is a, an okay change. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have definitely been in the boat of having an invader come in completely ruin us the first we like before we even uh, put our moats in, and then they already have like fucking 80 by the time that we we get back to the respawn at that point you're just like I, why even try like there's no point in trying like they're gonna fucking murder it like so at that point i just usually when i'm playing gambit i'll just continue with my my bounties and then uh once the game's over i'm like yeah like no ggs this is horrid um i think that's what people have a lot of issues with when it comes to uh the invader is not like it's just so oppressive. There's so many situations that it can be oppressive. We'll talk about that when, when I talk about in the invaders because I feel like 
I haven't read this since yesterday and I completely forgot about it to be fair because I've been playing uh, other games so Mode drain is paused if a player is near the bank and engaging blockers. It never feels great to have your moats draining while you pour ammo, primary ammo into three taken knights. Again, I love that he said that because that's exactly the fucking scenario that a lot of people are in because this game mode does not drop fucking heavy or special sometimes. It's way too RNG in my opinion. Way too much. Speaking of which, ammo economy. Our goal for these changes are to make a more predictable and equal baseline of special and heavy ammo among all players. We will be watching both feedback and then the analytics around ammo gain and usage rates. We'll continue to make tweaks if they aren't enough to make fair matches. When completing a front, a chest containing a small amount of special and heavy spawns in, ooh, in the middle or of the front, front and can be looted once each by player or once by each player it takes uh, out it takes out 20 seconds after the initial interact so you still can't uh so you can so you can still can't dilly dally all right this is definitely going to be heavy 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 uh heavy emphasis on make sure your teams are alive and if they're not alive don't be an asshole Res resuscitate them so that way they can get heavy so that way you can get ahead please um Killing a high value target spawns one normal heavy brick for each player. That's dope. I like that. During the primeval phase, ammo chests spawn in one of the fronts every 60 seconds. This replaces the regular front ammo chests, but you still need to find the time to grab it. This is completely fine. Um, primeval phases, uh, well, primeval phases are up next, so let's just finish this. Limited special and heavy ammo bricks to only spawn from enemies if you have finder mods equipped other ammo exotics and perks like aeon cult still work okay i like the changes these are really good uh it gives you a heavy heavy emphasis on making sure your teammates are alive so that way they can get heavy and special because it does not feel fun using your fucking primary on three nights believe me i've done that shit so i also love that when you're actually engaging in blockers the moats do not drain i think that's amazing because it promotes guys we need to stop what we're doing and go to the blockers or at least have one person at, in, as a blocker to block the blockers you know that's great i love that that's a great job um the primeval fight is the ultimate challenge of the ga of gambit i'm i'm not gonna read all of this we already know what the fuck prime primeval's do primeval health and slayer stack bonuses retuned uh, burning the boss after three rounds of envoys should be just as as easy as it, is, as it is now But burning him after just one or two rounds should be significantly more work Okay Envoys now spawn with friends out in the fronts rather than in the bank area hmm. They've reduced health and are no longer affected by slayer stacks and have varied elemental shields This is not good <laughs> like again a lot of the shit in this game, uh, in this game mode specifically, hit like a fucking truck. And having elemental shields for each of them is just horrible. People are gonna be get well. I don't know. There's a certain safe spots that you could go to that you could just ignore uh, them altogether. Or if you're a titan or warlock, you can just outright ignore everything because you know bubble and well exist. Uh, envoys now spawn with friends out in the fronts rather than in the bank area. Ooh, they have reduced health and are no longer affected by slayer stack and have varied elemental shields killing the envoys To get the slayer stacks will require movement dealing with the envoys protectors and dealing with their elemental shield This is not bad at all. Actually. They're not only easier to kill now, but I Can guarantee you most people are just gonna put on a sniper uh, Anything long range and just shoot it from a range like the probably or you have one person de designated to kill everything either way this is not like the craziest change um that definitely goes to the uh the shit spawns at around around everything now which is wild uh, envoys respawn at 30 percent of the primeval damage done this is increases by 30 percent every envoy respawn and env envoys stop spawning after the fifth spawn hmm. Okay, so you have to kill it. Okay, uh, 
The Prime Evil Servitor boss is removed since its custom shield mechanics conflict conflicted with the new mechanics. Thank fuck this piece of meatball piece of shit is gone. I hate this boss. Um, I don't know if you guys t I got grabbed that from that, but I fucking hate the meatball. Oh my God. I hate the fact that he shielded himself and everyone in the fucking arena. I'm happy this piece of shit is gone. Uh, invasions, as we said above. Okay, let's just read it. Level advantage level advantage is now disabled for invader PVP. It had it actually, uh, it has actually been like this since the start of beyond light and whatever. Uh, one of the one of the moat phase invasions has been removed, so you can only invade twice now. Is what I'm reading. Invasions now occur at or invasions now trigger at 40 and 80 moat tr thresholds. Primeval phase invasions are unchanged. Okay, invasions can no longer be saved. Use it or lose it, pal. Okay. Um. So wouldn't you be able to? Like at 39 or 40, I'm sorry. At 40, you get your first one. Like around before anyone hit before anyone hits 80 on their on their moat threshold, you can go in and then immediately start banking your moats. Kill everything. And then like let's say let's say you still haven't hit, hit uh primeval yet. You can go in for another round. You if it, you can plan around it and like do some scummy shit with it, but it'll be less annoying than having an invader come in three times in a row so i guess that's that's really good invasions can no longer yeah i already said that that's also a good thing that they can't be saved although i don't know how useful that's gonna be um it's definitely gonna be useful because after 80 if you didn't use your 80 invasion then you're fucked because you can't go back out uh which will help people you know actually try to catch up uh, invaders no longer can see how many moats enemy players are carrying and player name plates fade out when the invader is aiming down their sights. We can still see players through walls, just not while you are engaging your rocket, your rocket tracking or using your sniper zoom. Um, I don't know about this change. Uh, I definitely appreciate what they're trying to do, but I feel like this is just too much randomness. I, I, I much prefer, like, so I don't know who, I don't know who, who came up with this idea. It's such a great idea though. Uh, instead of uh, wall hacks, just give them pings, like occasional pings where you, it'll ping the area or not even the area. It'll ping like the, the enemies that you have in front of you. So that way you can actually know where they are and then where they're headed. Although I've also heard the counter argument where, well, if we had that, we can like psych out the enemy. But you don't even know when the ping's gonna happen. There's a lot of variables with it too as well. But I like that change a lot more than whatever this is. Like you can't see any emotes anymore. It's like that's cool. Uh doesn't matter if people are st still gonna be killing four people at once. Um because wall hex is that powerful. <laughs> so I don't know. This change just doesn't seem like it's it's strong for the sense that uh you won't initially know who has the most motes until they go in the back and hide. Then you're like, okay, that dude must have 15. So I don't know. It helps, but there's certain things that players do that will reveal if they have a valuable amount of motes. Like again, if you're hiding, that most likely means you have 15 or around 10 or 15. Um, if other people are protecting you, that means they also may have either high amounts of moats or they're protecting the one that has the high amounts of moats either way uh whatever i don't know we found a bug with how the primeval heal effect has been has been has was being applied which depending on the se sequence and timing of kills would heal the primeval for somewhere between 5 to 35 percent we fixed it and now the invader kills heal the primeval for exactly 27 percent every time Sounds like a lot, but is actually less than the optimal amount prior. We'll be watching feedback and anal analytics very closely on this one and we'll retune as necessary. Um, Gambit is the second of the core rituals after Trials of Osiris to get comprehensive engram focusing options. Focusing, you can focus the Gambit engram into either Gambit armor or Gambit weapons for 10,000 glimmer and 50 legendary shards. That's... 
that's pretty good. 10,000 Glimmer is not a lot. Uh, 50 Legendary Shards is a lot for some people. Um, I actually do think it's a lot for Legendary Ingram because if this was like Destiny 1, then 50 would have been cheap in my opinion. If, but Destiny 2 where you get this shit gets fucking rained on you 50 is a bit much um gambit weapons includes crowd pleaser bottom bottom dollar trinary system borrow time and servant leader okay i've got all the god rolls for these so i'm, I'm good <laughs> brand new gambit weapons are drop only for a single season and are then available for focusing we expect to expand drifters focusing options further during the upcoming season so essentially uh, if there's new weapons for Gambit, you have to play Gambit to get them. That's pretty terrible in my opinion, but I can see why they're trying to do that. They're trying to retain players and that's a good way to do it. I just, I don't know. If, I don't, I don't know if that's enough incentive for people. Other drifter changes, bygones, trust and bad omens have been removed from the vendor. That's good. Uh, considering these haven't been viable and oh my God, like two over two expansions, I think. No one. Whenever we had, uh, I think it was Season of the, no, it wasn't Season of the Worthy. Uh, I don't remember when, when Sunsetting became a thing, but it hasn't been relevant in a while. To be fair, the weapons haven't been relevant since forever. I don't think anyone uses that trust uh, weapon, that role that specifically uh, Drifter has, because I think if I remember correctly, it's terrible. Uh, I might pick up Bygones and Trust just because those two weapons are weapons that I actually do love, but yeah. And match drops. There is a gambit memento for weapon crafting that can drop for any mat for uh, wait for any match yeah older gambit shaders now have a small chance of dropping at the end of each match this is great news i am so appreciative of this one because i know a lot of people uh, didn't play gambit or didn't want to play gambit because of you know it's gambit gambit's pretty terrible so i'm pretty happy that these are coming back because a lot of people that are into the fashion of this game or didn't play that in that season couldn't get the older uh, gambit shaders and a lot of them are really good uh, i'm gonna try to showcase them at least like one at least a uh, gambit jane jade stone if that one is there i'm gonna be really happy for the community because i am not the type of person that will look at something that i have and be like i'm happy no one has this because this makes me unique i think people who do that are shitty and they need to prioritize their life because that's fucking like it's it's pathetic uh so for me seeing older gambit shaders coming back i very much am happy about that and i would love to see you guys rock new gambit shaders because a lot of the gambit shaders are fire uh, primeval servitor cosmetic drops can now drop at the end of any match the furtive shell ghost can now drop at the end oh oh that's right i forgot they had a uh, that's a good shell i like that shell a lot i don't use it a lot but i like it a lot Yes, you can expect more rituals to get this treatment throughout the year, but we do not currently have any specific dates to share just yet. Stay tuned. Hopefully, they're actually working on it. I, yeah, hopefully. Um, the future in Gambit Labs. There are a few things eagle-eyed readers might might notice are missing from the above. Don't forget, we do not have a timeline for future changes. So these are some changes that I'm actually pretty excited about because there is a specific one about uh, bounties that... Oh man, it's gonna it's gonna make me really happy. Also, um, nothing. Never mind. Let's let's get let's get right into it. The daily gambit bounty objectives are generally fine, but some of the repeatable bounties have some an an anuros an I'm gonna look that word up later. Completion requirements. We are taking a pass on these, though we may they won't all come out at once. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Sometime this season, we will be adjusting the completion amounts for most Gambit repeatable bounties. Weapon kills drop from 25 to 15. Melee and grenade kills drop from 25 to 5. And super kills 15 to 10. So let me tell you why I appreciate this. I do get, I do, well, generally, I do a lot of bounties. Um, I, I say generally because I haven't been playing the game a lot. But again, I generally play the game uh, bounties, a lot of bounties during the week because, you know, that's the only way to earn Bright Dust. And the weapon kill drops are legitimately soul crushing sometimes because 
most of the time you're not going to get 25 kills unless you get a really good weapon uh bounty which is like usually the higher end weapons so like smgs are really good for that specifically if you use certain exotics um some auto rifles are pretty good as well and then you have the the horrible ones in my opinion where which are like the hand cannons the hand cannon one is terrible uh if anything that's like single shot is going to be terrible for you uh, with the exception with like sidearms, I think sidearms are completely fine if you use the right sidearm. If you use just a, sh a like a one tap, like you have to keep clicking it to shoot, then it's going to be terrible. But if you use like an, either a semi-automatic or an automatic uh, sidearm, easy. So seeing the, the kills that I have to get drop to 15 is a sigh of relief, even more so for the melee and grenade kills to five that's a big like these are going to be so i'm going to be looking for these now and then the super kills from uh dropping to 10 is also really good in season 17 we'll be making additional tuning changes as well as adding three new bounties throughout the year we will also be adding bounty specific to light 3.0 updates that's that's good actually i've totally forgot uh, gambit labs invasion edition so we also have a couple of Gambit Labs that play with some of the core invasion concepts. These will run for each, or for one week each, and will take over the base Gambit nodes. I don't like that. Uh, I would much prefer if they, you know, actually had a, a separate node for Labs. Uh, just because we don't know if it's gonna fuck with like getting bounties done or something like that, or quests. Or, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like that, but whatever. Invasion swap. This lab's very this lab very ugh, this lab's variation plays around with who gets to benefit from triggered uh, invasions. During moat phases, instead of opening your own invasion portal at 40 and 80, you instead open your opponent's eva invasion portal. You expect this to completely disrupt the accepted meta for how and when to deposit and invade. We're looking forward to see this one. So. So once we hit 40, they get the invasion. Honestly, it, okay, so I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at this purely from a team perspective. If me and my team go into this, I would most likely ask everyone to put at least like the minimum minimum 39 or 39 motes. I wanna have 39 motes in there, and then everyone's gonna have to get 15. So that way it's like 60 going in. in. So that way it's like uh, at the end, it'll be uh, 93, I think. <laughs> so at that point, they'll get. Yeah, that's that's going to be pretty terrible because they'll lose uh, the level, the, the 40 portal, but they'll gain the 80 portal. So essentially, they'll only only be able to uh, go in once. Uh, before the the. Uh, primeval comes out so that's that's how i would do it if that's the case i can see everyone doing like minimum 30 or 39 i would do 39 because it's just an easier number you would have literally 99 motes and you would just need one more um because and then at that point the person would be waiting but by the time that we all hit our motes in there it, it'll be too late it'll be at 99 the only way that the other team would be able to come back from that would be if uh, the person kills every person in there. He like the invader needs to kill everyone in there, so that way the other team that should be doing the same meta would do the the exact same thing. They would wait until thirty nine or thirty, and then put everything in their moats. And then actually, that invade is probably gonna make or break some teams, be or make or break some matches because if that invade does not do well. Uh, the other people can just put it in their modes and then that's it. I don't know. This this seems dope, but it's also very risky. I like the idea of it though. Moat fee. Fundamentally, the original concept of the invader was guard guardian as taken terror, empowered and dangerous. Something new to have to fight. While that is very compelling, we don't believe it is only compel. It is the only compelling invader fantasy. We believe the sneaky moat thief is worth exploring too. Maybe there there are more. Normal moat drain from having two blockers is disabled. Instead, every second the invader is invading, one moat drains uh, directly from your bank to the invader's bank. This one, uh, if I remember correctly, it's 30 seconds or 50, 15 seconds. Uh, 
it is usually how much I'll have it in the screen right now, just specifically this, but this one seems pretty powerful, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, what about trials? I don't really care about this. Trials is just trials. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to be talking about the armor in the next video. I'm going to be talking about PVP in the next video because this, this was a meaty, meaty twab. Um, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on my social media outlets, links are in the description below. I thank you all and appreciate you all. And I'll see you guys later.